So Derek and I are 54 miles away from each other. He's in Washington, Vermont. I'm in Bartlett, New Hampshire. And we have been trying to make a contact with each other through the repeater on the International Space Station. As cool as it is to talk to random people on the International Space Station repeater, it's way cooler to talk to somebody you know. We had already tried several times this night to contact each other, and you have to wait 90 minutes between passes. The space station was 248 miles up, going 17,500 miles an hour, out over the North Atlantic, and we calculated the distance to be roughly 800 miles. So 800 miles out and 800 miles back. I'm using a 10-watt walkie-talkie standing on my top step, talking 1,600 miles to Derek, who's on his 50-watt base station. I have my Samsung camera phone set up on my tripod in the yard doing video of it going over and I'm recording it on my wristwatch. Well at least every other time I was doing that. This time I just walked out and randomly stood on the top step and actually made the contact. That's why we're laughing because all the other times uh, we were trying it you know we were all prepared for it and this one we didn't expect to get through. Fortunately, I had just walked Derek through how to record on his phone, and he was recording, so he got the first part of it, and then eventually I turned my recorder on. So I'm playing both soundtracks on this video, and when you hear the echoey sound, that's because you're hearing it from my wristwatch recording and also from Derek's recording. So in any place that you hear that echoing sound, that means that both of us are hearing through the space station. And then there's other places where you hear us talking over each other. That's because we're not hearing each other through the space station. We both made several contacts, but what I'm posting here is the logbook from one of the contacts in Pennsylvania. The guy is very quick about putting stuff up on his QRZ page. And you can see that we're both listed there. The repeater on the International Space Station is a cross-band repeater, meaning that it's transmitting and receiving on completely different bands. So if you set up your base radio to be able to listen on one band and transmit on the other, you know when you hear your own voice that you are reaching the repeater. I'm using a handheld radio, and I have a radio in my left hand for receiving because it's close to my wristwatch, and I have one in my right hand for transmitting. And once I hear myself, I know that I'm reaching the repeater, and if you're in the middle of talking and you're not hearing yourself, you just stop talking and start over again. This was late at night, and it was the last pass I was going to attempt to, to contact it, so I didn't bring both radios with me, and I forgot to start the recorder on my watch. That's why we were laughing, because all the effort we put into it before, we were prepared, and this time, when we weren't prepared for it, we made the contact. And part of the reason that we made the contact is because it's way out over the North Atlantic, so people on the East Coast of the United States are getting the best signal, and it's late at night, so... Other people have probably gone to bed, too, so that cuts down on the amount of competition you have for making the contact. The map you see here is from a program called Orbitron, and it follows all of the satellites. So you can select whatever satellite you're interested in tracking, and it'll show you the three most recent passes. And it also shows you where the sun is shining in the world, and that is important sometimes because a lot of these satellites have um, solar panels on them, and... When they get old, their batteries aren't holding up as well, and they don't want you to use them if the sun is not shining on them. One final thing, when you're watching the video, you'll see it tracking across the sky, and then all of a sudden you'll see it bump up and back up. That's because I am running the gimbal on my camera and moving the thing back so that it's not running off the screen. Um, I just got the thing the other day, and I haven't learned how to use everything on it, so it's a little rough there, but you get the idea, so enjoy it. Kilo Charlie 1, Quebec, X-Ray Luma FN 3-4. Kilo Echo 8, Whiskey India Yankee, QSL. Alpha Charlie 2, Kilo Uniform, Fox Mike 2 9. Kilo Charlie 1, Quebec, X-Ray Luma FN 3-4. Kilo Charlie 1, Quebec, X-Ray Lima FM 24. This is Kilo Echo 8, Whiskey India Yankee, QSL. QSL, QSL, FN34, FN34. Fox November, 00. FN34. Have a good one. 73. 73, KC1, QXL, FN34. KC1, QXL, Whiskey 3, Dark Ocean. Fox November, 
Zero, zero. Whiskey three, dog ocean. QSL, uh, FN three, four here. K1 DFA, KC1 QXL. Figures, when I don't have my record going, you answer me. QSL, Roger, doing well. FN34 here. FN34 station, Alpha Charlie 2, QO uniform, Fox Mike 29. KC1 QXL here, repeat call, please. KC1 QXL, just one more. I time copy the Alpha Station, K1 Alpha Station again. Whiskey 3, Delta Ox Oscar, QSL. The Alpha Station, Alpha Station again, KC1 QXL FN34. Me and Roger did it. K1 DFA, New Hampshire. KC1 QXL, K1 DFA. K1 DFA, that was pretty cool, huh? That was awesome. That was awesome. I got... I tried to acknowledge that Alpha Station. I said QSL, hopefully you got that. Um... I think I got four that time. So I got the W Whiskey Three Dog Oscar Kilo Echo Eight Station U, and I think I got that Alpha Station. I got it on the phone here. I recorded all of it. So that was four calls for that path. That was awesome. And the Whiskey Three Dog Oscar was calling you too. Yes, I did copy that, and I I uh, recorded. At well, I've actually still got it recording now. I did record towards the end, but when I was talking to you, I didn't have it recording. I was just, I had one radio with me. I was just standing on the top of my steps instead of going outside. I was just kind of half-heartedly listening to see if I could hear you. And it was so much quieter that I had a pretty good idea I might be able to get through, you know? Yep, you're like, of course, you answer when you're not recording. <laughs> That was awesome. I got it here on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you do, and I'm dying to have you send that to me. So I have some further explanations. When you hear the people saying FN44 or FN34, they're giving their Maidenhead grid square. It's a thing that was created by ham radio operators in 1980 in Maidenhead, England, to give ham radio operators a quick way to give their location, or QTH as they call it. A lot of these guys are trying to get all of the maidenhead squares they can get, and they really want you to tell them what your grid square is. You also hear them giving their call sign phonetically, because normally if it's really noisy, it's hard to get through to hear exactly what someone said. And there was one guy on there, if you noticed, who was using something different every time. He wasn't using the normal phonetic alphabet. He was saying everything from Dog Oscar to Dark Ocean to Delta Oscar, and Delta Oscar is what he should have been saying. It does mess you up a little bit when they start doing that because you're used to using specific things and he's changing it all. But a lot of times people will use whatever that person said so that they hear them. And later you heard Derek and me talking again on a different thing altogether, which is Echolink. And Echolink uses computers and radios together or just computers to talk. So I had walked back into my house at that point, still had my wristwatch recording and recorded Derek and me talking through Echolink. There are a ton of things that you can do with ham radio, a lot of really cool, fun things. So you should give it a try. Might even save your life. Who knows?